You remember the Oppo Find X? Well, if you live in the United States, you probably don't, but it was this crazy smartphone that wanted so badly to give you as much screen area as possible that it hid its cameras behind this crazy motorized pop-up unit. In 2018, at the near nadir of smartphone design excitement, it was pretty awesome. Well, in the world of 2020, smartphones have gotten a lot more ambitious. I mean, we've got three types of folding phone on store shelves. Dual screen phones are making a comeback. And I just this week saw a trio of crazy concepts from TCL. They're straight out of a sci-fi future. Against this backdrop, it's tough to get excited about something this conventional looking. But with a display that pushes the limits of eyesight, a battery that charges insanely fast, and yes, the return of the leather backside, I couldn't resist at least a quick look at Oppo's next attempt to find X. My first question for Oppo about the Find X2 was, guys, what happened to the pop-up cameras? The company told me that the simplified design is a response to user complaints, that the first Find X was too large, too heavy, and they also didn't like that it lacked dust and water resistance. So for X2, Oppo added an IP68 rating, and it focused on display innovation to make it as eye-popping as possible. Fair enough, but it did that with a bunch of stuff we've mostly seen before. Curved edges, which get in the way, a crazy high refresh rate that's quickly becoming common on flagship phones, and new motion interpolation that upscales videos to 120 FPS, because that's something we want. Don't get me wrong, it's a beautiful display, but I feel like we reached this plateau with smartphone screens last year, or even the year before, and it's just hard to get excited about them unless you really need those crazy frame rates, or the touch response for games, or making motion look somewhat smoother. Somewhat. Also, I can't help but feel a little let down to see the return of the hole-punch selfie camera. That first Find X was just so cool! On the complete other side of the coin, though, is this battery. More specifically, this battery charger, which I wish worked on every phone. This is a charging technology called SuperVook 2.0, which, in addition to sounding like a character on Star Trek Picard, is the fastest battery charger I've ever used. With a charging rate of 65 watts, Oppo promises top-ups from empty to full in 38 minutes. If that's not enough, you can also go from 0 to 25% in 5 minutes. With a battery this size, that means you can get a usable evening of power in less time than it takes you to shower. Now, Oppo might not ever bring its phones to the US, but I hope OnePlus, its sister company under BBK, licenses this tech for a faster version of Warp Charge which itself is a licensed version of the earlier SuperVook charging. Real quick, let's jump into the camera to see, uh, wait, oh, double clicking the power button doesn't launch the camera, right, because this isn't just Android, it's ColorOS. This interface has a lot of annoyances from elsewhere, not being able to dismiss notifications in both directions, like on an iPhone, a less useful left home panel, like on a Samsung, that camera shortcut, meh. Credit where it's due, though, ColorOS is way smoother and cleaner than it was a year or two ago, and it incorporated some file system improvements behind the scenes to more intelligently utilize the hardware. I haven't had any slowdowns on this phone, and frankly, I don't expect them. Once you finally do swipe into the camera, you've got three shooters to choose from. A 120-degree wide angle, a 48-megapixel primary, and a hybrid telephoto that maxes out at a noisy but impressive 60x zoom. That's backed up by improved optical and electronic stabilization in video mode and newly smoothed zooming as well. I haven't been shooting with it long enough to render a verdict of any kind. Again, this is not a review. Here's a few samples from my luckier moments and also my less than successful ones. This phone isn't built for North America, so I didn't test its sub-6 5G capabilities, phone calls, anything of that sort. What I did gain from a few days carrying it, though, was a renewed appreciation for a back panel that's not made of greasy glass. This is vegan leather, and it's just the perfect material for a phone back, soft to the touch and comfortably warm against the skin. I said it when I covered the OnePlus Concept One, and I've been saying it since the first Moto X, we need more leather phones. Even if you prefer the ceramic version, there are nice flourishes to appreciate here, 
like symmetrical top and bottom bezels and the off-centered nameplate. I'll repeat myself here. Hey, OnePlus, do me a favor and at least steal some of these touches. The leather, if nothing else. The Oppo Find X2 Pro is available soon. This hands-on, first impressions, not at all review was produced following three days with an Oppo Find X2 review sample provided by Oppo. While it's not slated for release in North America, my friends at Android Central have covered it. See AndroidCentral.com for complete pricing and availability details, and also subscribe to their YouTube channel to learn much more. As always, Oppo was given no copy approval rights or a sneak peek at this hands-on, and I don't produce coverage paid for by the manufacturers I cover. Oppo is seeing this hands-on for the first time right alongside you. Until next time, thanks for watching, and stay mobile, my friends.